The rollout of One UI 7 has definitely been a bit of a bumpy ride, but now that Samsung is finally starting to roll it out to more Galaxy devices, here are some amazing Galaxy One UI 7 features that I think everybody should know. Now let's start things off with the lock screen because we do get some really cool new features in here. So if you long press on your lock screen and then authenticate, it will go into your lock screen editor. And now we can edit pretty much all of the elements of the lock screen. And let's start things off with the clock because we do get some new clock styles with One UI 7. And if you swipe over, you can see right here, we have some new animated clocks, which look really nice. And you can also now resize the clock to pretty much be as big as you want. You can see you can have this take over your whole entire screen and you can of course move it wherever you want. So we definitely get a little bit more freedom in how we can customize our lock screen. Next, moving on to the widgets, we do get a few new powerful widgets on One UI 7. You can see we have a lot more options than we ever had before. And some of the new ones that I really like, I've already added on here. You can see we have the camera widget and essentially what this will allow you to do is launch any specific camera mode directly from your lock screen. So we can already double tap to bring up our camera, but now with this widget, you can see we have a starting mode and you can select whether you want the rear camera or the front camera, or you can even choose which specific camera mode to go into. The next one in here that I really like is the days until calendar. So to add this, it's under your calendar and you can see right there, we have the countdown widget. And what you can do with this one is select it and then choose a specific event out of your calendar. So you can see I have a Mexico trip coming up and if you select it, it'll just show you on your lock screen how many days are left until your trip. And this last one that I've added on here is the microphone widget. And this one is really cool because you can start a voice recording directly from your lock screen by just tapping on it. And you can see it starts a voice recording and I can even interact with it from the now bar so I can pause it or start it again. And if I want to stop the voice recording, if I'm done with it, I just need to tap on here again and it will save it to my phone. But now moving on with the rest of the lock screen, if we go back into the editor, we get a little bit more customizability with the shortcuts down here. So you can see I have a dialer here and my flashlight here. And if you tap on it, you can change the shortcuts that you want to map on your lock screen. Now before with One UI 6, we only had like one or two or maybe even three options here. And you can see now we have a whole lot more. And a lot of these are actually really useful. You can put your phone into power saving mode, enable dark mode, put on do not disturb. This is really great if you maybe have a meeting and you don't want your phone interrupting you, you can do it all from here. Or of course, if you want, you can map this shortcut to any application that you have on your phone and be able to quickly access it directly from your lock screen. Now with the home screen, we also get some really great improvements that Samsung has brought with One UI 7. And to access them, what you want to do is long press on your home screen, go to settings right here. And you can see right at the top, we have app sizes and we can customize the size of the applications. And you can see in the little preview there what it looks like. I like having my phone more minimal. So I always go to the smallest icon size, but of course you can do what's best for you. And we have an option here, which I absolutely love app labels. If you enable this, you can see what's going to happen is all of my applications now have the name of the application under them. But for me personally, since I like things minimal, like I said, I removed this app labels option and you can see it, there's no more text under these icons and everything looks a lot more clean. Obviously, I know by the picture of these icons exactly what they are. So I don't really need that. And I just really like the look of this much more. Now scrolling down a little bit, you'll see an option here called rotate to landscape mode. And if you enable this, what you will be able to do is rotate your display into landscape mode. And Samsung has made some really great improvements Okay, so I need to actually enable screen rotate to do this, but Samsung has actually made some really great improvements to what the experience of landscape mode looks like because you can see that the widgets retain their size and their shape and the icons kind of just shift over and all of your favorites will stay right here. So all the icons that you have on the bottom, this is your favorites bar. If you rotate it, it'll stay here in the side and even if you flip over to your next page, they will still stay right there to be easily accessible. And a secret feature you might not know is if you go back into your settings and you long press the rotate button, you can enable lock screen on here as well. And what this will do is rotate your lock screen. So if I show you, I go to my lock screen, I can rotate it and it'll rotate my lock screen. And then if I don't touch it and let the always on display turn on, you can see that I get a really big clock right here. And this is kind of like the standby mode on iPhone where you can just prop this on like a uh, stand or a MagSafe charger. And it'll just sit like this on your nightstand so that if you're sleeping and you wake up at night and you want to know the time, you can quickly glimpse over 
and you'll know exactly what time it is in the middle of the night. Samsung has also introduced expanded folders, which I absolutely love because it allows you to customize your screen a little bit more and just gives you a better way to put more icons on your screen and access them a little bit easier. So you can see this is what the traditional folders used to look like. You can take your icons or apps and then drag it into the folder. I missed right there. We'll try again. And then to access them, you have to tap on it and then go to those apps from there. But with the expanded folder, you can see that I have it right here. All you need to do to create one is take your original folder, long press on it, and you'll get an option here for enlarge. And you can see it makes it a little bit bigger. And what's cool about this is, again, you can fit more icons on your screen, but you don't actually need to tap into the folder to access them because you can tap on the icons themselves and it will open up directly out of that folder. All right, now this next One UI 7 feature is one that people have been asking for for a long time, and it's the ability to record phone calls. And the way to do this is next time you're on a phone call, if somebody calls you or you call them, uh, if I answer this call right here, I'm going to mute everybody. What you wanna do is you'll see this little button right here that looks like a cassette tape. If you tap on it, it says right there, before recording starts, the other person will hear that this phone call is being recorded. And now you can just go about your conversation. And if you want to stop the recording, you can either just hang up or you can tap on this cassette icon again and the recording will stop. So if we get out of this phone call and then go into our call logs, you can see that there's this little microphone icon in here and that means that the phone call was recorded. And if we tap on this and then go into the call logs, you can see that there is a transcript that you can view. So if we tap on this, the phone will use AI to break the conversation up into chat bubbles, depending on who said who. So you can read through the whole entire conversation, or if you want, you can even play it back and listen to it on your phone. All right, this next One UI 7 feature has to do with video, and it's going to make your video recordings a lot more smooth because now when you go into your camera, go to the video tab, if you start a recording, you'll now get this slider that will make zooming in and out of your videos much smoother. So before we would have to pinch in or out with our fingers or tap on a different focal length, but that would kind of give you a really choppy zoom in and zoom out and it just didn't look too good. But now with the slider, it makes the experience much better. And this is going to make your videos look a lot more clean and professional. Next, we got audio eraser. And this is definitely a really good one situationally. I can see this being really useful if you're maybe at like a destination wedding and there's just constantly waves crashing to the shore or an airplane flies over. You can use audio eraser to find those noises and suppress them and have the video focus only on the dialect. So if somebody's talking, it will focus on the voice and suppress all of those other background noises. So let's test it out right now live. I have my laptop here. I have some background city noise video loaded up. So let's start a video and see exactly how this turns out. All right, guys. So I am testing out the audio eraser on the Galaxy S25 Ultra. This is what my voice sounds like. There's some background noise going on in the background of this video. Hopefully you can hear it. Hopefully this sounds pretty good. All right, so that actually sounded pretty good. It seemed like it was able to identify that background noise and suppress those levels pretty well. But let me know in the comments below if you noticed a big difference and would you ever use this feature and how? Now in the beginning of this video, I showed you the countdown widget and you can actually add that as a widget to your home screen as well. So we're gonna do that because I think it's actually a really cool new feature. But if we go to widgets and then we go down to our calendar, you can see we have a few of these here. So we can pick something like this square one, add it to our home screen. And then if we tap on it again, we can select a event we got coming up. So I'm gonna use my Mexico trip as an example again. And if we swipe down in these settings, you can see we can change the shape a little bit of that widget. But what's cool is we can set a custom image. So if I tap on this and then go into my camera, I can then go ahead and select a custom image. So here's actually a picture of me on my last Mexico vacation. So what we can do is just add my face into this little box, hit done. And then when we hit save, we're gonna get that countdown widget here on our home screen. It'll tell us how many days are left until our Mexico trip and I'll just have my face right there, all happy with my sombrero, excited for my trip. Now on our lock screen, we have a new feature called the now bar, and you can see down here at the bottom, it kind of acts like the dynamic island of the iPhone where it will just show you background applications or tasks that you have running. So you can see I have a uh, timer running, I have tonight's brief, I have a song playing, and if I start that voice recording again, it'll pop up down here in the now brief and you can kind of get some quick access to some of these background tasks that you got running in the background. And of course you can interact with them from here so you can pause it or start it up again. If you have music playing, 
you can tap on it to expand it and then you'll get this kind of large overlay where you can see the album art and just some more controls for your music player. But one of my favorite features of the now bar is the ability to see the live scores of any sporting events you got going on. Now, you do need to enable this. It's not going to work by itself. So what you want to do is go into your phone settings, go to lock screen and always on display. Then you'll see now bar right there and you'll see an option here for sports from Google. This is enabled by default, but you still need to go in here and follow the teams that you care about. So if we tap on here, you will see that there's this little pop up here where you can search for your teams and then follow them. So I'm following the Maple Leafs right now, the Raptors, but let's say I also want to follow the Edmonton Oilers. We'll type Edmonton right there and you'll see Oilers. All you got to do is hit follow and then you hit finish and that's it. Now, anytime any of those teams that you're following are playing, you will see the live scores on your now bar on your lock screen and always on display. So definitely a really cool feature. And if you want to see those live scores, definitely go ahead and set this up. Now, this next feature is called nearby devices. And this is really useful if you want to quickly connect or disconnect any of your Bluetooth devices from your phone. But what you want to do is go and swipe down into your quick settings and you'll see this option here for nearby devices. If we tap on this, you will see all of the Bluetooth devices that I have connected to my phone. So I, of course, have my Galaxy Watch currently connected and I've got my Galaxy Buds right here. And if you want to disconnect anything, all you got to do is just tap it and drag it out. And just like that, it disconnects from your phone. And if you have any other uh, devices in here, just tap on them and then bring them back in and it will connect it back to your phone. All right, guys, now this next feature is one of my favorites. It's super powerful because Samsung has made some improvements to the Routines app. And if you know anything about the Routines, they were already really cool. There's a lot of really amazing things that you can do. If you don't use Routines, I highly suggest you check it out. And if you want to actually have a video that I'll leave linked in the description below for some of the cool routines that you can set up on your phone. But now with One UI 7, they made some even crazier improvements and you can just do mind-blowingly insane things with routines. So in your settings, just go to modes and routines, tap on routines right here. And to create a new routine, just hit on the plus icon. Now we have the if and then section, which you're probably familiar with already. But what's really powerful here is when you go to the then section, you can scroll down to advanced options and they have an if else section in here. And this allows you to expand on routines so much more. If you're into programming, you know exactly how if else works. But this is just crazy. To show you a routine that I created using this, we can go to my workout routine right here. You can see in the if section, it says if the Samsung health app is opened, and then in the then section, there is an if statement that says if the exercise that is selected is weight machines. So if I'm doing weight training, I have a whole bunch of different things in here, but essentially what it's going to do is turn on Bluetooth and connect to my Beats Studio Pros specifically because those are the headphones that I like to wear while I'm working out. But the powerful thing about this is you can see it says if any other workout is selected outside of strength training, it will specifically connect to my Galaxy Buds 3 because these are the headphones I like to wear when I go for a run. And you can see I've also set it to activate noise canceling and turn on voice to text. So if anybody tries to talk to me while I'm on a run, I don't need to take out my phone and pause my music. It will just voice detect and lower the music and turn on transparency mode so that I can hear who I'm talking to. This is one of those really crazy features with One UI 7 that's super underrated. Not a lot of people are talking about this, but I really think the power of this is going to be insane, especially if you have a really large Samsung ecosystem and you have lots of different Samsung devices, they're all gonna be able to work together and you're gonna be able to make some insane routines. The next feature is called Best Face and you probably already heard about this, but essentially the way it works is when you turn on motion photo, it will take a couple seconds of a video of any picture that you take. It's kind of like live photos on the iPhone, but what will happen is let's say you're taking a group photo and somebody looks away at a certain moment, you can tap on their face and then select the frame in the video that it took in the motion photo of the moment that they were looking at the camera so that everybody in the picture is looking at the camera. And it's definitely really cool for those group pictures. You don't have to keep retaking photos until you get the perfect one. Now, one of my favorite Galaxy AI features is circle to search. I actually use this quite often in my day to day life. Now, if you don't know how this works, essentially, if you're scrolling through social media or you just are on the Internet and you see a photo of something and you want to learn about what that is, what you can do is just tap and hold on the bottom of your screen 
it'll invoke circle to search and then you can circle whatever it is on your screen and Galaxy AI will identify that and give you some more information about that item. Now circle to search itself is not new to One UI 7, we did have it on One UI 6 but they did bring a new feature with One UI 7 and that is the ability to identify music. So again, if we invoke circle to search, you'll see that we have this little uh, tunes icon and if we tap on it, it's going to listen to the music around us or you can even hum a song to it and it will try to identify what that song is. And what's cool is it will actually work within apps as well. So if you're listening to Spotify or again, you're like on TikTok and there's a song playing, you can bring it up while that video is playing and it will identify it directly from your phone, which is definitely a really useful feature because there's a lot of really cool songs out there that don't have the title or artist. And if you want to learn about it, Circle to Search has got you covered. All right, guys, now this last feature is definitely going to make your life much easier because if you're anything like me, you take thousands and thousands and thousands of photos on your phone that go years and years back. And if you ever need to go back in time and find a particular photo, that can be a very, very tedious task. But with Galaxy AI, you don't need to do that. You can let the AI find it for you. And it actually does a pretty amazing job of doing that. Now to show you how this works, what you want to do is just go to your gallery app and then hit on the search icon up here. And then down here, you'll see it says, what are you looking for? And what you can do is hit the microphone and ask it to find something, or you could just type something in here. So let's say I want to find pictures of my ski trip from BC that I went earlier this year. And there you go. You can see in just a matter of seconds, it brought up all the pictures from British Columbia when I went to my ski trip. Let's say maybe I want to find all the pictures of me wearing a sombrero. And there you go, you can see all the photos I have uh, in my gallery of anybody wearing a sombrero. I can just ask Galaxy AI to find any of these things that I need and it will find it in just a matter of seconds. So it's definitely a really awesome feature to be able to just filter through all of the photos you have on your gallery without having to spend a copious amount of time to find them yourself. But there you go guys, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Let me know in the comments below if you have One UI 7 on your phone yet and what are some of your favorite One UI 7 features. But that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.